Welcome to Refat Stories. I'm Adrian, your host, and today we're going to be talking to Kian McCoy. Um, she's traditionally a journalist, and now she's doing epic things in the social media space. So we're going to be <laughs> learning more about her um, journey from Jamaica to the U.S. and back. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Okay, and first of all, I just want to say, people, oh, I'm boy. obsessed with her makeup, with her hair, with her whole look, with her vibe. And I just want to give you a prop for that. I appreciate it. Thanks for that intro. <laughs> I didn't know I was I didn't know I was at epic things in the social you media are, area, but you thank are you. Thank doing you. So um so um first of all we like to establish what it was like growing up in your home country. So for you that was Jamaica and um you grew up here until you went to college. So mm -hmm. tell us about what that was like. Yeah. So growing up in Jamaica was was fine for me. I always had a really good family environment, home environment. I I had a good relationship with my mom, my dad, my sister, and mm -hmm. very encouraging people when it whether it came to what I wanted to do for extracurriculars. I, they always knew or recognized that I wanted to write. When I um, started the photography, they were like, "Oh my gosh!" and they would post when I would do printouts for presents, birthday presents, and Christmas. They were excited, post them. So I, I felt very loved growing up, and so when I when it came to college and going away, you know, a lot of Jamaican parents, you get fed this dream of eventually migrating sometimes, or just, you know, you have family abroad and people are traveling, and it it started coming into my into my, I guess my consciousness that you know there was. There was this moving away, but they were the first ones that were that were encouraging me about expanding my horizons. You know, you want to be a you want to be a writer. Maybe you should start thinking about going away and going to school abroad just to get exposure and all of these things. So, but yeah, I I love growing up here. <laughs> I have so many friends as part of why I came back. Like mm -hmm. all the people that I met throughout all my years in school, and yeah, I'm an island girl, yeah. <laughs> beach and everything. So. Yeah. Growing up, Jamaica was a good place for me, and it was it was very good to me. Yeah, and you say. said you grew up in Kingston. I grew up in Kingston. So, and you said yeah. Yeah, you travel a lot to yeah, I, island, which yeah, exactly. So, both of my parents traveled for work a lot, and mm. so they were really good. Some of my favorite memories were being pulled out of school to go stay out of That's town cool. with my mom, whether she was doing some road shows or or whatever it was, and so we I got to explore and experience a lot and. That's how I knew I was a beach girl, and, <laughs> and as much as I like the city life, the mm -hmm. fast pace and everything, but getting to escape to a countryside and the beach and Jamaica, Jamaica is beautiful, yeah. very beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. I just want to stop a little bit because <clears throat> you went to Campion, right? I did. So Campion College is like known, it's been known for decades now as like, um, it, uh, it takes in people who are at the top of their achieve their academic achievement mm -hmm. game, right? Uh, it's very competitive, and very so, competitive. Um, so what what was it like? Even though you were at such a competitive school, your parents still fit. Which which the idea is that it puts you in a better position. All of it was the building, the, uh, right? Of the the future building, because I think from a very early on they were. They're very forward-planning people, mm -hmm. and I think early on they knew that they wanted both of their kids to have a foreign education. Mm -hmm. So that meant, you know, best prep school, best high schools, every extracurricular activity, <laughs> you know, whatever it was. And so I, I was definitely. My parents were very good at molding. Okay, I feel very molded. <laughs> I feel very was that hard sometimes? Sometimes oh, yeah, the it's, molding it's, can it's, be. It's a lot it of pressure. Chafing. It's chafing. It's mm -hmm. pressure mm -hmm. because you you don't want to bristle up against. Wow, my parents are they care about me so much. They right. invest in so much time. They're they want me to be so great right. and everything. And you know when you don't you don't want to go to swimming today. You're so tired. <laughs> but mommy is like, you have to go to swimming. We just bought the swimming gears. You you have to find it in it, but at that age you don't you don't recognize it as sacrificing and and being invested and committing and all of these big terms. But that is what you're being trained to do, and it's not until as them say, you know, when you get older and you you hear mom's voice in the back of your head, and like, wow, she was right. She was right. <laughs> but, fair, yeah. fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, so you said that your parents essentially from the time you got to high school, maybe be maybe even before then, they were saying you were going abroad. Yeah. To the point where at one point you were telling people at school, like, hey, girl, yeah. I'm out. I, like, that's, it's actually a really funny story. I remember mm -hmm. the other day, like, I think it was around third form. Mm -hmm. I, it was, that's when it was really ramping up because 
I started hearing about, oh, we could go to boarding school. Mm. And then I said, oh, I could do boarding school. That was really interesting. I started reading this um, YA novel series about mm -hmm. the, the girls. And they were in boarding school and they had the uniforms mm -hmm. and all these extracurriculars. And I was right. like, okay, maybe this migration thing could work. Maybe right. it could work. So. Yeah. I remember it just sounded like we were going this weekend, right. we have appointments, we're doing this, we're doing this, we just talked to grandma and I was like, wow, do I have to start telling my friends? Right. So I, I, I remember the day I started like, telling people, guys, I think, I think I'm migrating right. and it was so dramatic and sad and, and then I just showed up back at school. <laughs> 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 yeah, right, and eventually it wasn't until college where mm -hmm. the ball really got rolling, but this whole time it was a process. Gotcha. So I. I, I thought, wow, was I, where, was I lying to people? Were, were my parents lying mm -hmm. to me? But it's just such a long process. I, yeah. I, I think a lot of people think you just get up one day and migrate. And you, just, you just show yeah, up at the embassy. Get and get, for yeah, it. you get like, filed for it. The relatives abroad say, I'm filing for you. And, and then, just, then the next Then just pull it up, pack right. it in a suitcase. Right. But no, it's, it is a long lifetime process for a lot of people. Right. And then later on, that plays into the guilt of, wow, I think I might want to come back. Mm -hmm. I think I don't want to be here <laughs> yeah 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 so. all right so we'll come to that we'll yeah. come to that yeah. um so you're gearing up to go you said your grandmother was there already yeah all right so um you've done all your prep you said that even when you finished high school you took an extra year yeah. or a semester off yeah. to to do that preparation prepare for that was it just to do like test prep and apply or was, were there other factors at play so you know the the trajectory is you finish fifth form and mm -hmm. you either you know you go to pre ue or you take your work or whatever it was mm -hmm. so i was on that trajectory I, I thought i wanted to go away and in the same timeline as everybody so this would have been fall 2014 if i if i stayed on the timeline and uh, i got into a, i got into a school that i wanted to go to and then started accepting letters and i remember my mom was like i don't think we should go there. Mm. I don't think we should go to this school. So there was. Can you say the name of the school? Because it was a big deal. There, so there was there were two schools. There was mm -hmm. LIU Post mm -hmm. that was in Brooklyn. I wanted to do journalism there because mm -hmm. it was in the city. And then there was a school far away. When I thought I wanted to absolutely run, since since you guys are making me go away to school, okay. I'm gonna go far and I'm gonna go explore. There was somewhere in like Oregon. Oh, I see. <laughs> and my mom was like. Mm, I'm not what are we doing I'm here? not sending you to Oregon yeah. and then I think if I went to the school in Oregon I would have been like an English degree oh. so she was like I'm not sending you away to yeah. do an English degree yeah. and uh, um, I also got accepted to Karimak. I accepted that as well because mm -hmm. I, I put all my eggs so Karimak is the Caribbean Karimak is at UWE at yeah, so in Jamaica I was I was trying to spread because mm -hmm. I there was a point where I said I don't think I have the grades right. to go out to go overseas I don't think champion or not. I, I, I was seeing my pairs right. hearing the 2400s, the 1900s on the, on the SATs, and I think at my highest I was clocking like 17, mm -hmm. and so which is about which, midway. Which is about midway, mm -hmm. and you just because of the environment of champion, yeah. the pressure, the overachieving. I wrote, I wrote myself off. I was like, I don't think I can go away. Let me just get to go to Carmack, I'm already here, just transition, it's still journalism. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a compromise, but mm -hmm. a compromise that would make me feel more comfortable. Like right. I and my mom was like, don't limit yourself. Yeah. Don't sell yourself out. Let's, your let's take the time. Her name is Heather McCoy. Miss Heather, big up to you. <laughs> big up you Miss Heather. She she <laughs> had the vision. She always had the vision mm -hmm. and she always believed in me. I think she she could see it yeah she always believed in me a little bit more than I could for myself right. and you know when you're younger you just feel like she's fighting you out <laughs> and you she's not letting you do what you want to mm -hmm. but no she which there is some of that sometimes. there is some but of that they have the vision with they it. have the vision right. and it's for, a, it's for a reason yeah and it's not even just parents it's anybody who is watching you right. from a third party you know they don't have the voices in the head yeah. they, they just see how you're moving and That's so, so true. other people can validate you in that way but That's so true. yeah and so we got to the agreement that let's take the time off let's do it properly mm -hmm. let's reevaluate you're not confident in your SAT scores let's go to SAT classes mm -hmm. and so we started at AIM mm -hmm. and then we we narrowed down that we think we want to go to Stony Brook mm -hmm. it's in a familiar area grandma is close by if I feel like I can't manage or whatever it was and that was the plan and mm -hmm. some other schools but I, I think the second time around I might have applied to 
probably 10 schools, okay. a good amount. Mm -hmm. And I, I got accepted to six. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't... 150%? Yeah. That's and so the second time around, I had mm -hmm. more options. Mm -hmm. And then we got and into... And that you a little bit more it too, right? It doesn't it does. just feel like, oh, I have to take... The, like only two people want me. Yeah. So it, it feels less demoralizing. And then even in the first crop, you, I got accepted to some schools and they were giving me like $3,000 mm -hmm. scholarships to the private schools way up north, it, like um, Syracuse and all those places. But... It, it, it still wouldn't make sense, make sense and yeah. you know in hindsight you realize that parents were just trying to help you make it make sense and adults are people they they're not always going to know the best way to say things or the best approach they might not recognize that you need a soft approach mm -hmm. which is something I recognize that I've I needed mm -hmm. the whole time because I wasn't rebelling against my parents or right. I wasn't unaware of the opportunities to go away but I I wanted it to make sense for me but right. yeah so with the second time around getting accepted and Stony Brook was the choice on everybody's side mm -hmm. and we got there and my parents were like we're gonna make this happen yeah. we're gonna make this happen so we went full gear and I ended up at Stony Brook and yeah the rest is really history all right I don't regret it at all so let's take I a step say. back yeah. all right yeah, Stony Brook. but mm -hmm. you were looking at degrees and I remember you telling me that your parents like we had a moment we had to come to acceptance of journalism yeah yeah um that was funny to me because you said what were you thinking of photography so my in my original i'm running away plan mm -hmm. i was going to go to nyu mm -hmm. i was going to study journal um photography actually because mm -hmm. i wanted to be a fashion photographer mm -hmm. um i had photography dreams like mm -hmm. that was that was a, and then again parents step in and say think a little bit wider mm -hmm. think a little bit broader don't limit yourself in those ways and so we were battling, do I want to do law? Do I want to do psychology? Whatever mm -hmm. it was. And I, it, it wasn't Stony Brook that made me choose journalism, but looking at the other programs at the New York schools. And mm -hmm. then I, I was like, oh, journalism has photography, has film, has writing, has everything. And so it would be a good jump off point for me. Yeah. And so it was f full speed. I want to do journalism and then I had to convince my parents, which I didn't think I would have to do at first because journalism even sounds fancy. Right. It's just like, oh, that sounds good. My daughter's a journalist. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I guess they still weren't sure like what I, yeah, what do I want to do with the mm. journalism degree? And it wasn't until close to time to, to, to leave for school, my dad is like, Kian, you know, we watch the news every night. <laughs> we so watch funny. the news every night. So I get it. It's it's true. Journalism yeah. journalism is important. We right. need journalism. And I was like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> thanks. I'm glad we got there. Right. It took us a but while, it, but we got there. It took us a while because I was still <laughs> feeling like, wow, yes, yes, we're going away, and everybody's going to benefit. My parents get their dream of oh, my, my daughter's going away to school. With we're doing our job as parents, she's going to get this good education. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, they're they're not going to be fully supportive of me. But we turned around and yeah, it was yeah. full force ahead. When I started school and I was showing showing them the newsroom and the and the computers and mm -hmm. the microphones and the cameras and <laughs> the studio, mm -hmm. it was they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Can't wait to see you on CNN. <laughs> yeah, so parents are so funny. Parents are hilarious. Answer. Parents are hilarious. <laughs> parents are really funny. That. They have such big dreams for their kids. I know. <laughs> and you know what? They have to because we like we don't even get it. No, we don't. We don't even get it. Like yeah. they've seen enough, so they have to know, and they know what's possible. So they know what's we possible. We literally can't imagine yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, and I love that it was the opposite way because for some people, they have these big dreams and appearance, their minds yeah. are like this small. They can't see that yeah, far. So I love that. I love yeah. that it was almost like the opposite or, or at least equal, you know? Yeah. Um, so, all right. So we are at Stony Brook. Mm -hmm. This was, you'd visited the U.S. before? Yeah. So I've mm -hmm. always had family that lived mm -hmm. abroad. So I got to travel for summer. Mm -hmm. You know, you go and you do your back to school shopping. Right. You get your shoes and you walk around in the Payless right. and you get your books and all of that. So right. I I was familiar with New York, which right. is where Stony Brook is. Right. And but I didn't visit the school. I didn't mm -hmm. do a school tour. I didn't do anything. I was it was a dream. Yeah. I would be on the 360 right. virtual tours, just looking at all the pictures, yeah. going. Did they have an Instagram at that time? Because this is 2015. Yeah, maybe this is, they did, but maybe So they it maybe probably not. wasn't very mm -hmm. popular, mm -hmm. but so I was just soaking up as much over the internet as possible. Yeah. And I started as an international student mm -hmm. and you 
they usually have you on campus like the week before. Okay. So we have a longer orientation process. Mm -hmm. The week I started, there was a blizzard. I believe I started in January. <laughs> I started right? in January. Yeah. I, this is me. I Winter is in December. Right. So Christmas, white Christmas. It's going to snow in Christmas. Right. This, I started... I, I can tell you because the holidays it's right before Martin Luther King oh, so that's yeah, like the yeah, 17th like, so, or yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's not blizzard oh my gosh and international students are the only ones on campus oh my gosh so I think I was one of three people plus oh. RAs in my building never seen snow before and the snow was up to the doors oh <laughs> my goodness and were you still expected to go out to the hot to events so, yeah, so, yeah but oh. you know they they were very good with clearing okay. but just seeing it happen overnight yeah, yeah, yeah. I I did not know that snow did that. Oh my god! I didn't know that snow piled. Yeah, <laughs> right. I just thought it fell and then it was on the ground That's and then pretty. it and then it melts and it goes away. But wow! It's there. Yeah, great. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so funny. Yeah. So that was an adjustment. Oh wow! That was an adjustment. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it. So um, you're there and you say you start as an international student. Were you the only Jamaican at the time? Do you know? From the international cohort, mm. I I think I was the only gen the only first generation okay. Jamaican in my cohort. I mm. met a lot of people from um, Africa. One mm -hmm. of my closest friends at the time, she was from Nigeria. Mm. So that was really exciting because I think when you think of going away to school, the first thing you're excited to do is meet people from mm -hmm. different countries all mm -hmm. over the world. And so starting international gave me that off the bat. Yeah. Stony Brook has the, I think at the time, the highest demographic was Asian students. Yes. And so it was students from China, mm -hmm. India, Pakistan. And it was just so exciting. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, all these people, everybody's right. so different. And so it wasn't until full semester started there, I started to meet other Jamaicans, second generations. I even met some people that went to camp and that oh, we weren't neat. in the same year, but neat. people from other high schools. And yeah. so I, I was worried about feeling like, you know, a fish out of water, but mm -hmm. they immediately found other Caribbean people and mm -hmm. real, real Caribbean, Caribbean people. <laughs> that's shade y'all that's not the caribbeans not, the, not the caribbeans and the oxtails, and the oxtails. I'm, I'm talking about people who have lived experience in the caribbean because oh you, know, you will gosh. you will adopt your, the culture of your people especially right. if your family is very is very caribbean and that's what right. you learn right. there are people who do feel connected because right. they, their family has the culture they still speak patois or whatever mm -hmm. it is they travel right. so y there's there's actually three demarcations <laughs> I would say I would say like three yes, but yes, yeah yes, yes. so it it was it was a very good start it was okay. a very good start all right yeah. so you said you were there for three years you were on campus I was on, on I lived on campus for three years for three years right and at that point so you were international for the whole three years I or? was international for the first year and the then year. like a thief in the night <laughs> the papers came through right. and so that kind of made a lot of the adjustment a little bit easier in mm -hmm. terms of financing school mm -hmm. because Stony Brook is a public school mm -hmm. so there's no international scholarships really oh. you have to be some kind of amazing high achieving person and remember it started with me not thinking I had enough grades mm -hmm. so eventually we were able to get in-state tuition mm -hmm. and just everything was adjusted and so there was a lot less pressure yeah. there was a lot less pressure overall from both me like there's a pressure, oh, I can't, I can't get below a B, right. I, I have to go to every class, I can't be sick, uh, all of these things. Right. So eventually, not like, not that I took advantage. Right. Go to every class, Go kids. to every, go, go to, to every class. class kids. All you do, don't take 8 a.m.s. <laughs> if you can avoid it, 8 a.m. in high school, in the Caribbean, and in college in the States. It's different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so it, it, I'm glad that eventually the, the ghost of the of the migration right. it actually caught up and, and it was i would say it was it was worth it for yeah. for the main purpose of getting us through school right but it it especially helped my sister who came up after me she mm -hmm. finished she finished school out here mm -hmm. and then she was able to start in a year she did a final year of high school oh. so her college process was so much easier, easier than mine she got scholarships she got the picks she got What's the, her name her name is Keisha. Keisha, big up you. Uh, big up, sis. <laughs> nurse K. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. She's a nurse. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So, it's, it was definitely, you see, you see the vision. You mm -hmm. get what your parents were trying to do for you because yeah. I 
the exposure of just yes it started as i wanted to do a journalism degree mm -hmm. but i still didn't know how right. how to evolve with it I, right. I wanted to be a writer but did i i knew i did not want to write hard news mm. so as much as Fair. mommy and daddy wanted to see me on cnn and right. tvj news primetime news with dion jackson miller and whoever <laughs> i did not think i did not think that was for me yeah and it was being in school and and it was the first time that I heard that entertainment journalism is real That's journalism. Real thing. Entertainment journalism is news, mm -hmm. and it's not just gossip magazines. Right. It's a, you can you can be really, really deep about it. You can talk about the business. You can talk yeah. about the law. You can talk about the ethics. Yeah. I mean, look at what's happening with UMG and TikTok. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. so I, I am glad for that experience and that exposure that I got, mm -hmm. and just different hearing from different people what their aspirations are right people who were living in a in a, a country that allows you to dream big especially mm -hmm. new york mm -hmm. where everybody's dreaming big so you really hear like this is what people are thinking this yeah. is what people are thinking so yeah. that exposure was awesome and then you know i think the goal is to for for people who don't necessarily want to migrate and stay you mm -hmm. want to soak up and bring it bring it back yeah bring it back to wherever your, your home country is and start mm -hmm. the development there right. to create the life that you experience right. in your home country so people don't have to leave right. to get that right yeah oh love that she's a visionary people because everyone doesn't have that vision right some people just it's about me and and that's fear especially yeah. when it's been hard coming up it's yeah. like they don't necessarily think to say, oh, I could bring something back. I could do something. But and I know it's lofty. Get, it's it lofty, lofty and it sounds, it sounds like, oh, well, this girl, she living a pipe dream and right. she thinks she's a savior. It's really not. It's mm -hmm. really not that. It's just, it's possibilities. Because, right. yes, it's about you. You live this life. You went to school. You went to work. And you want to better your life for your family. But in doing so, there's always, there's always a little impact you can leave. Mm -hmm. There's always a little knowledge you can impart. Mm -hmm. And if you, even if you don't come back, you want to visit Jamaica mm -hmm. and be able to be, or wherever you're, you're from, and you want to visit and be like, wow, like this would be so good if Jamaica had this. And um, whether it's, you know, efficient banking or, <laughs> or just what, whatever it is. Mm -hmm ticket system what yeah. just you know you want to you want to be aspirational for yourself and the places that you live yeah. the places where you exist yeah yeah fair okay mm. no. so no 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 you're fine um so all right so you after you um got your i guess a green card it is mm -hmm. yeah so you're living with your grandma you're commuting to school mm -hmm. you finish this five-year degree yeah it took me, it's a four year degree, but it took uh -huh. me five years. There's mm -hmm. a running joke at Stony Brook that the journalism program, if you finish in four years, you're a superstar. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is very rigorous. It's oh. a very rigorous, very detailed program. Okay. And then we, it was a small faculty. Mm -hmm. So sometimes classes are only offered once, once a semester. Gotcha. So that was a whole nother drama with me finishing in the five years because uh, just time and money and right. guilt, like, oh, we only planned for the four, four. years and it's taken me a whole other year. and so much guilt yeah so much to work through with my parents and i'm just just really grateful that they they never they never made me feel like like a burden or like a yeah. waste in them time they were always so supportive oh gosh because you put a lot of pressure on yourself too so if they were also also adding to that and you feel like it's legitimate like that can really and sometimes all you do with under that pressure is just paralyzed yeah. like you have to yeah. do the way literally just Liter like you yeah. can't and i definitely function. had those moments like mm -hmm. when you when you can look back and now that I've been removed from that experience so long and I'm starting to reflect, I'm like, wow, there were, I definitely had moments where I shut down, as you say, and mm -hmm. there are gaps, there are yeah. gaps just from stress and just yeah. overworking yourself and you get to a point of, of being paralyzed. You, mm -hmm. you don't know what to do. And I wish I, if, you, if your mother was there to tell me, just do the next best, mm -hmm. the next best move. I probably yeah. wouldn't have been so stuck so many times. But. So I was saying to Kian yeah. before that my mother is like her, one of her favorite things to say is just, at each point just take the next best step right regardless of if it's, if it's big or small regardless of what the bigger goal is it's just to take the next best yeah. step um so yeah okay so are right, you finished five years mm -hmm. and now it's 2020 it's and 2020. you think you're gonna come back so i i didn't it 2020 happened and i was still working mm -hmm. i was i was working as a sales a sales rep at Pier One Imports, mm. gorgeous furniture store. Yeah. I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. it, I, I went to work and I was decorating and mm. smelling candles yeah. and like helping people decorate their 
guest rooms yeah. in their Long Island homes, their holiday, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was comfortable enough that, oh, this is my, this is my between job. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to start doing internships because I graduated in 2020. That was my slated graduation. Right. And uh, then pandemic. Right. And so that was March, as we know. And mm -hmm. graduation is May. Graduation is May, so we still had to make it to the timeline and we shut down at work for two weeks and then we just never went back to work yeah. and eventually Pier 1 went bankrupt. So, oh there was, so there was no Pier 1 to go back to. I, there was a point where I was like, wow, I kind of want to be the store manager, like I can see myself developing here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the interior decoration was, was really fun for mm -hmm. me. I, it was a good outlet. I, I it was it was good. People yeah. don't like their retail experience, but it was it was. Let's pretty pause. Good. Let's talk about that because yeah. that's one of the things I love about life. It's like you get these experiences because I know you can decorate a room, <laughs> right? Yeah. But but you went to college and yeah. I have nothing to do with nothing you being to do with, it. with college. Nothing to but do with it. but that will also play into your creativity with mm. how you do that's exactly the work you I do know it. and yeah. like. That's so amazing, like working with color and working with so texture. So that's the thing that I've with... always loved playing with colors, oh. but I never, I never found a way to do it. And so, so good. how we how we end up in the yeah. content creation social media, it yeah. it started with the colors. Yeah. It started with the colors. Mm -hmm. It started with making color palettes and mm -hmm. just arranging things and mm -hmm. playing with squiggly lines mm -hmm. and scents and all of that. And so it it was important. It was it was just supposed to be. Oh, I, I'm I'm ready for a part time job. I I, I can get a, I can get a, a legal work and right. something there. And I ended up loving it. That's awesome. And then COVID snatched, snatched it, it. Oh, no. snatched it from me. Mm -hmm. And how it how I ended up saying, Wow, do I have to come back home? Was I just had no idea what to do next. Mm -hmm. I had my virtual graduation, so we didn't get that on the offboarding. I did have an internship. Did you talk to the career counselor? I, I wasn't even sure if, we, if the career center was still open. Oh, like, Lord. I was just trying to figure out this COVID thing yeah, at the yeah. time. And at one point, I was like, I maybe maybe I have to go home. Mm. I, I was getting really depressed mm -hmm. being inside because New York was the epicenter for a long mm -hmm. time, if we remember. It was terrifying going outside. I know. The death the death and rate was the, terrible. If everything was just coming down yeah. really, really hard and set. and not that not that Jamaica was like doing much better right. but at least home. at least I was home because my, my mom my mom was home at the time yeah. my dad was still here mm -hmm. and it was my sister and I at my grandma's house mm -hmm. and it was it was really difficult we were both working in retail at the time mm -hmm. so we both lost our jobs mm -hmm. and we were both we had to do the unemployment and the stimulus checks and it mm -hmm. was it was dire mm -hmm. it was dire like what how do we how do we how do we move on from oh, here? Right. I, ju I just finished school. Right. I just finished school. This was supposed to be my jump off. Right. right? My career is supposed to start now. And so I said, let me, let me try going home. Yeah. Let me just see how that can work. Because mm -hmm. um, I, my mom, uh, she's the business administrator at a cardiology clinic. Okay. So she, she always wanted, she was always asking me to help her write the articles mm -hmm. that they would post. And she would ha just ask me for my uh, opinion on the marketing front because mm -hmm. she's, she's a marketing business administration, amazing person. Mm -hmm. HR, everything, everything business, yeah. that's Heather McCoy. Yeah. Business, <laughs> girl boss, yeah. girl boss, that's my mom. <laughs> And so when I when I came home, I was like, "Let me do this officially. Yeah. Like, let's would you try and take me on as an yeah. employee?" Yeah. And so started working part time at the clinic, and and but even before that, how could I forget the most pivotal part in 2018? Actually, advice on mommy again. Yeah. She, mommy, you know, mommy, you know. She. This is that big of you. <laughs> She knows. Work. she knows she knows she knows she's she's gonna sit back and be like I know. <laughs> yeah but i she sent me she sent me an internship for mm -hmm. a marketing agency called lucra Lux. that was 2018 mm -hmm. out here out here in okay. jamaica okay so i was still in school this is mm -hmm. 2018 mm -hmm. and i applied and i said i'm only here for summer right i can work with you for a month and a couple of weeks and but that's I all you need i got interviewed oh. and i got the job and i was like marketing <laughs> do i love do i love this is this me right. because i i got to um use my writing skills mm -hmm. and be creative come up with witty copy and yeah. and that's when i was like copywriting yes that's a thing that's a thing it's a thing and that internship was where i was just like this is how 
I use my journalism yeah. and use my creativity and yeah. use my curiosity and yeah. all of that. And I was just like, wow, yeah. I think I think this is what I want to do. Yeah. And so that was supposed to just be um, the summer from the beginning of August to the end of August. Mm -hmm. And I, when it was supposed to end, I remember reaching out to, to my boss and saying, I know you don't usually do this, but can we try and do a remote thing? Yeah. And he's like, sure, you can try it. Mm -hmm. And I, was, and I, I, he allowed me to do it for a couple oh, months. Love that. And it was just, it was really awesome until it got hard. Yeah. It was awesome school until stuff. it got hard. School, mm -hmm. school, school. Because that semester, I remember vividly, mm -hmm. I finally got into one of those once a year classes. Okay. And it was the hardest class. Oh my gosh. It was a class where we had to spend, every week we had to do a, a full length story with video, multimedia, website building. <laughs> I website building on top of the... You, so we had to manage the website that we uploaded the stories. Oh, got gotcha. Yeah, so oh, it was a really a involved lot. class. And that's just one class. And that was just one class. And that's that true. class was, that was my 8 a.m. class. <laughs> She's traumatized, guys. Traumatized. Can you tell? And at that point, mm -hmm. and at that point, I was already commuting. Oh. So I was you. commuting. Was I, I was commuting. I was working. I was involved in campus activities. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was trying to do this remote job. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, go. yeah I fine. eventually, and there was a lot of guilt. I yeah. deal with a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt about these That's things. Fair. Yeah, and just wanting to represent myself well and do mm -hmm. my best. And I, I called him crying, like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I don't think it's working. I, I, re I feel really bad. I know I'm behind. And mm -hmm. he was just like, you're, yeah. you're, you're struggling. Mm -hmm. You're young. Like, it's, I know it was, a, I know it was a, 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 an adjustment and everything. Yeah. I appreciate you for for recognizing that you couldn't handle it and thank you for you know letting me know and i was just yeah. like wow and yeah that, yeah. Was, a, that was a really good yeah, experience yeah it, and you know the, you did a good thing which is to communicate because a lot of people when they're struggling they just disappear that was one of the first times that i i noticed that i was doing that shutdown yeah. thing and it was my sister again big up keisha mm -hmm. who was like i think you need to talk to yeah. somebody yeah. i think you are overwhelming yourself mm -hmm. And she, and then I sent, I did some hard email sending, yeah. some hard phone calls, put up my big girl pants for real. Right. And, but it, I needed to, I yeah. needed to, because I, I wasn't going to do the position justice. Right. I wasn't going to do the, the company justice or myself. Wow. I, I was so tired. Yeah. I was so tired. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. So, I mean, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm happy that you had people in your life that, had gr that gave you grace too even when you're hard on yourself like it helps when the people because you're not doing it for yourself yeah. but the people around you can help too yeah so that's awesome yeah, all right i definitely feel lucky for that because i know that's not always the case people it's so true. people are mean oh people my are gosh. mean people are mean and people will see that you're struggling and then choose to be mean because of that like, they don't want yeah. to see you cry they do they, they you do. literally have people like that they're like this is an opportunity to show yeah. my power over this oh my person gosh. Yeah. yeah that's real mm -hmm. all right so you were <clears throat> covid 